today I wanted to do a really quick video on my thoughts on the advanced placement of children in middle school. So I've talked about it often how different my children can be and I am not a pro by any means. I have honestly no idea what I'm talking about half the time, but I'll just give you my advice and what I think about our situation. So when we moved here from New Hampshire to Georgia, immediately we saw a difference in the schools. The schools are a little bit further behind and they don't put as much emphasis on some stuff. So for instance, if you failed a class in um, New Hampshire, you didn't go to the next grade, you stayed back. Here, it's not that way, they don't wanna deal with it. So uh, that was the first thing that threw me off, but so immediately when we moved here, they said Aubrey needed to be in uh, advanced, a gifted program. So they tested her for it, she passed it with flying colors, she immediately went into the gifted program. And basically here how they do it is one day a week in elementary school, it's, you know, that grade, every child in that grade that is gifted goes to the special teacher for the day. And they basically have a whole day of teaching with this teacher. And the classroom is not allowed to go over anything new, it's a good day for them to review, get the other kids caught up, whatever. Um, but so it was, it, it was a different way of thinking. And now your kid can be incredibly smart and get straight A's on everything. But apparently the gifted test is not just that. It's also just like that their brain kind of can think outside of the box and like simple things. Like I will be in here, like when I first got my Cricut, I didn't realize how to web things. So I had things printing out all randomly and I would attach them together. One of it was a spider web. I was in here and I'm not kidding you. I'm not exaggerating for... 20, 30 minutes, and I was so frustrated. Ivor came in, looked at it like that, had it all done, and I was just like, okay, we've officially reached that point that my child is smarter than I am, and I'm not really honestly shocked by that. <laughs> so, um, and like Aubrey, in, into this gifted program, the kids have to want to be there too. Like they want to learn, they want to do well in school, etc. so. Uh, we changed schools from fourth to fifth grade. It transferred over. She enjoyed it again. Uh, you know, they got to do special things like her fifth grade venture, field trip venture is what the program was called here. Um, they got to go and sleep in the Georgia Aquarium. Like she slept under the fishes. Like how cool is that? Um, so yeah, so then it was time to come to the end of the year and basically anyone who's in this program automatically could take every single class advanced when they went to middle school. So we decided to put her in this placement and for language arts, science, social studies. What are they? No, I guess that's the other one. Only ones. You can enter in these classes in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. As long as they, you know, a teacher says that they believe that you're there, that you're capable of it. Um, so we put her in those and then we were torn on math because she wasn't sure if she wanted to do math. And the teacher for advanced math at the school that she's going to is notorious for being a nightmare. We did have issues with her. Um, she has a tendency to pull kids down before she brings them back up. But advanced is no joke. So in the other classes, they're just getting a little bit more work or a little bit in depth work. Like who was so-and-so is your typical classroom's homework. Who is so-and-so and what did he do and where was he from and why? is what you're gonna get from advanced. So you're gonna get just pulling a little bit more is kind of what I see from my point of view. Because the same teachers teach, you know, typical and the advanced placement classes, whatever. Um, however, with math, the way that they do it here is her sixth grade year, she has done all of sixth grade math and half of seventh grade math. Her seventh grade year, she finishes her seventh grade math and she does all of eight, Yeah, all of her eighth grade math. Her eighth grade year, she's actually taking Algebra 1, high school Algebra 1, and it's a high school credit course. She gets high school credit for that. Um, with the science, social studies, and language arts, she basically can go in and she will take either AP or honors. Now, this is where I'm confused because like, if you take the APs and honors classes, one of them here, you get like half of a extra credit. So like if you make a 90 in that class, you actually get a 95 on your transcripts because 
they realize that that class is actually like a challenging class and I don't I think it's AP that that's for um but so the the science social studies and language arts it doesn't really matter to do those like you don't get a huge benefit from it but math you obviously do because so now she'll have done algebra one her fresh her, her eighth grade year her freshman year she'll do algebra two her sophomore year she'll do geometry her senior year she will do uh whatever she wants to do she can do there's a bunch of different options um and then her senior year she can take off or she can do dual enrollment or she can take college prep classes or whatever um so i mean it's like a huge advantage for her the same thing with her foreign language so when she's in an advanced placement class she will get to take advanced spanish which she's basically getting all of her high school um foreign language it's over and done with so the math one has been a really rough year it has been a struggle all year she has really fought with this teacher and if i didn't know what i knew about the teacher i would have taken her out however because i know what i know about the teacher i've kept her in for your honor spanish is that going to count towards your high school spanish if i do it for i don't have honor spanish there's no such thing as honor spanish if i do it for like two years or something like two semesters so one year um like i have it right now so if i finish this semester and i do it either in seventh or eighth grade it doesn't have to be back to back no i don't think so i'll have um one year done maybe of high school yeah foreign um, language whenever i start i'll have spanish two instead of spanish one all right and then i know about the math but then with your language arts science and social studies I know with math, you're basically skipping ahead a year. So like, you know, you'll do your freshman math, your eighth grade year with language, arts, science, no, and social won't. studies. No, you won't. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. You don't do freshman math. You're basically stepping ahead. So in eighth grade, you can do algebra. Right. And that's freshman math. It is, but you're not doing, you're not doing exactly freshman standards. You're also doing just regular algebra standards. Right. But then you don't have to take algebra one in high school. That's the whole point of yeah. it. If you're in advanced placement. Um, but with your language, arts, science, and social studies, you're not skipping anything. You still have to take four, four years of it in high school, right? Like your eighth grade year, you don't, that's not counting in high school, is it? I have no clue. I'd have to look into that, but I'm not sure. All right, that's all I needed. Um, so yeah, so we didn't have, I mean, we had issues all year with the math teacher, but it wasn't till the end of this year. And I just said, look, you only have a little bit more time. Let's get through this because I think for her to have her senior year with what if she doesn't want to take a math class she doesn't have to um if she wants to take college courses she can we live in an area where there's a lot of schools around us like in our town that do um dual enrollment type stuff that if she wants to go to that she can and there's the magnet program um there's just so many options if she stays in math so that's why i really wanted to push that and I mean, she is being pushed. Like, she's doing more homework than Trevor ever did in sixth grade. But I mean, they're also very different, d different kids. Like, no, Trevor does a lot, did a lot more <clears throat> homework than I did. But like, she, oh. like, I see the stuff that she has to turn in, and it's a lot more like in depth than Trevor's work ever was. Um, but I don't have any regrets on putting her in venture and then putting her in this honors program. Now, Casey, so Casey took the same test that she did and he literally missed it by one point, like one point. She passed it like a crap ton, like a lot of points over. Um, so with Casey, I'm giving him the option. He can retake that test next year if he wants. I may have him wait and see if he wants to take it in fifth grade. Um, because I think that that pulled down his like not morale but like his, not his confidence a little bit like he felt like he wasn't as smart i think you should let him do it in fourth grade that way he can do it in fifth grade and get a taste of what advanced classes it's going to be like <sighs> instead of just going straight in um but i have no doubt that he won't be offered to take some advanced classes even if he doesn't pass that venture test um and you can do that like aubrey had a friend that was not in venture and she got elected to go into like two or three advanced placement classes yeah, but then her mom put her in all um and I just think in my head, I'm thinking she's going to be involved with a bunch of kids that are the majority of the kids that want to do well. Like I pick up one of her friends that's in all advanced classes besides her and the girl is crazy and the girl is goofy, but 
I know that she's a good kid. I know that she wants to do well in school. I know that she's on that path. You know, most of Aubrey's friends are on that path that they're, you know, trying and they want to do well and um, they don't want to fail. They don't want to get bad grades and, you know, they want to go places. You know, Aubrey's already talking and a friend of mine's son just got into it. It's called the magnet program. And basically, so when Aubrey goes to college, Aubrey, for as long as I can remember, has said she wants to be a marine biologist. And I know a lot of kids say that, but like, I mean, there's been like researches of colleges and programs and things like that. So um, they have, I think it's biotech or biochem and then some sort of like nursing style program. And basically these kids have to be, you have to apply, you have to get like teacher recommendation letters and then you apply to the school and it's in our county um but it's really far away but like there is like a swamp on site there's like a small medical procedure type room on site so like it's a really like push into that pathway style that excuse me that, oh my god that they choose here in georgia and you know having her in this advanced placement really gives her a good chance to get into that and have you know just I mean I could have never done it in high school because I just wasn't there but like that's an awesome opportunity to be able to do things like that like you know see how a beaver builds its dam and things like that um and I think that it would truly I think it would truly give her the time in the four years to decide like, yes, for sure, I definitely want to do marine biology or you know what, maybe marine biology isn't for me. Um, and then that way she's not going to college and wasting that time in college and having to go to five years of college to do it when she could have, you know what I mean? Like if that makes any sense at all. So I will say that, you know, with Casey, I think it will help him. I think him having advanced placement classes definitely will help him, but I won't put him in all. Like I probably won't put him in advanced math. I don't know, or maybe I'll only put him in advanced math. Um, but for Aubrey, I know that she could handle the workload. She is messy and unorganized, but it's, it's working for her. She gets pretty good grades overall. And like her grades did drop, but she was out of school for like three days with strep. And that's a big thing with advanced classes is when they're missing one day of school, that is a lot of information that they're getting in. And she missed, it was either two or three days back to back. Three, because I had missed that. And it really messed her up. Like it really, she had, she's still playing catch up, I feel like from that. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Like if your kids miss a lot of school, advanced placement may not be the thing for them. Aubrey overall does not miss a lot of school at all. Um, she goes to the orthodontist in the end of May and she may have to get an appliance put in. And that's a fear of mine. And I told, cause they said, you know, you have to alternate morning and afternoons. And I'm like, well, she has a morning, like, um, you know, something that's not like an elective, like that's gonna suck because she's gonna be missing a lot of time on a regular basis. And I hate that. So yeah, so I th I'm very impressed with advanced placement. I'm very impressed with the gifted and talented program. And I think that it's, I think it's really gonna benefit Aubrey. Um, Casey, I'm not sure. I'm very interested to see how the next two years go with him. Uh, because I work in the school, he does get placed in really good classrooms with a lot of kids that are in venture and things like that. So even if he's not doing venture, he's on that level, that higher level. And he is the same way Aubrey is. He wants to do well. And like, look, all kids are not that way. My son, Trevor, he got a 70 in math the other day. And I was like, holly freaking luya like we are not failing he has a 70 in math he got two 80s in science and social studies no in science and language arts and he got an 89 in um social studies and i was like holy crap like i was like that's an amazing report card and i'm like most people would be like oh you all, you're basically on this disease but like that's where trevor's at and trevor does not care like the kid didn't go on his eighth grade field trip because he didn't want to give me the form. Um, you know, he's just not there with like the, like wanting to do well. He's maturing a lot more than he was in sixth grade. So I think in ninth grade, he will want, he's continuously improving and wanting to do better and better and getting proud when he does do these things. Like it's nice for him to come home and say, Hey mom, I made a 95 on that test. Like that was unheard of in sixth grade. Um, 
So, you know, I have that level two. I understand it. I totally get it. Uh, and then Ellie, I think Ellie's going to be on the venture route too. And I'm very curious with Ellie because they've already mentioned that they'll be testing her in January or in first grade. Uh, her teacher is looping. So her teacher is staying with her class if they want to. Um, if you don't want to, you can go to a different teacher and she may get a few new kids, but they're looping up. So the whole class has a chance to stay together for first grade. So now this is a huge benefit because basically every year, your first few months are reviewing. Reviewing what they did last year, the teacher trying to figure out the kids, placing them, all that stuff. She knows those kids now. So they have to do very little reviewing and then they bump up and they really get rolling. Um, and Ellie's the top dog in our class. She was the first one to finish all of her sight words. She was the, she's the, one of the only ones that's reading. Her writing is very well. Like she's using capitalization and punctuation and she's just, her, her teacher's like, she is an amazing student. She's like, as a teacher, this is what you want to have coming into your classroom. And so I think she'll be on that same advanced pathway. So I'm glad that like Aubrey and Casey, you know, like I'll have had them, but I'm very interested to see if it makes a difference, her having venture from first or fifth grade, because Aubrey only had it for fourth and fifth grade. If Casey gets it, he'll only have it for fourth and fifth grade. I'm very interested to see if like her going from first to fifth grade, if it'll make much difference or any difference at all. And then by then too, you know, I've also thought about Aubrey doesn't have to do honors classes and, and AP classes when she gets to high school. She doesn't want to maybe just let her have that typical, you know, high school experience. But I also wonder if she would get bored and, you know, not want to be it. And so, you know, I think Aubrey's senior year is going to be a really awesome senior year. She's not going to have a lot to do because she's putting in so much work now that she's going to enjoy it. Now, Trevor, on the other hand, we will probably be biting our teeth or biting our nails up until the day of graduation, hoping that the kid graduates. Like I like being stressed out because every time I'm stressed out, I think that I think that one year, like that one year, I'm not gonna have to do anything basically. Um, but you know, any tips I could think? I mean, I think for my kids, we both real my my middle school kids, we both realized this year. Um, so Trevor, his first year, we got him a bunch of binders, like one for each subject. Okay. Um, and then yeah. this year, we got him a binder that had like I put uh index tabs in it and then had him put all the stuff in and then right now he has nothing in his binder he's just putting papers in his backpack which did you prefer in your in your middle school when i gave you like a bunch of different binders or folders with like one for each subject or one for everything one for everything there you go so I I he likes that but she doesn't she wants like a different thing for each so you know for me i think that extreme organization for your child will benefit them so like trevor likes one big thing aubrey does not um if you're gonna get one big binder don't get one that has just like a clasp like get one that zips because it will open up and you'll at least want everything to be there not all over the place for aubrey next year i think i'm gonna get her um I honestly think I'm going to get her a color coded system. So like a binder for every class that she needs it. Like she doesn't need one for gym, obviously, but like a binder for every class. So let's say like math is red and then also get her a folder that's red. So like if maybe she wants to leave the binder at home um, and then she can put like all of her notes and study stuff in it and everything and then just have the folders in her backpack so that she doesn't have to carry around all those binders because it's going to get heavy. I would um, want to do that. Like, every, like this week we put out something that we did like two or three weeks ago. And, uh, like I didn't know we were going to do it, but we put out something we did a while ago because we had to re-look over it and we do that stuff often. Um, but, you know, have a system for her. Uh, they both have had planners and they don't use them. I wish they would, but they don't. I wish they realized the benefit of using a planner, but they don't. However, I think that both of them could benefit from like a wall calendar in their room um, where they could kind of jot down like I have a test this day. I have, you know, I'm hoping next year to get them involved in sports if I can find the time to do it. Um, but, you know, I have sports this day. I have FCA this day. I have this this day to keep them organized. Um, I buy them a crap ton of paper at the beginning of the year because I know that they're going to need it and we, you know, solely have it. In middle school, they haven't really needed, you know, they don't need crayons and colored pencils and markers much actually, at all. Yeah, it would actually be really helpful in sixth grade because we do a lot of things, especially in advanced classes, like a lot in social studies and like science. We do a lot of things where we color code stuff like, like right now I'm working on a Canadian map and we have to color code it with like, um, like, um, 
what do you call it, like climate. Yeah, but you could use one pack of colored pencils probably for the whole year. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, I think a big thing that they need in, in middle school is highlighters good pens like good ones that write for Aubrey she and I don't know if it's just for her for fun or whatever but she likes having like you know co different colored pens like she doesn't like just black and blue like she would like me to get like gel pens that are you know a bunch of different colored sets um she's often using tape but I don't know if she's playing or actually using it index cards that's a huge thing she needs I, I don't even know how many packs of index cards we bought this year and I didn't buy any at back to school, so I will be stocking up at back to school because they do get really expensive. This year we bought mechanical pencils, um, and I did buy a bunch of the refills for them, but honestly, they've never come and asked me for them. So I don't know if they're just throwing the pencils out, if they lost them all, what happened. I lost them all. Um, but yeah, I mean, you'll find what works for your kids, but an organized system, like I gave them all pencil bags, they don't use them, so I don't even bother buying them anymore. Uh, both of them have backpacks where there's like a front thing. I think a good backpack with a smart layout is more important than anything. Um, you know, something that maybe has that open pocket where they can put all their pens and pencils and calculator and all that stuff in it. And then, you know, maybe a couple different areas so like they can put their lunch in one spot and then their other stuff in the back. Cause like Aubrey does have a locker and she uses it. Trevor and has never I used don't a use locker. I locker anymore cause I only have that one binder and I never know what I'm going to use it. But, um like they never go to their locker and put their lunch in it or anything in it so they're always lugging around a lot of stuff so a good backpack is definitely key i think um i think next year i'm gonna buy a pink one because i've seen them and they're wicked like heavy duty and mine has holes everywhere and so every time i put something in there it falls out and it really sucks because i lose everything um so yeah so i mean that's my two cents i know this is kind of a very weird all over the place video but people have asked me like you know how are things like oh are all your kids you know advanced no they're not i think that my girls definitely are they're definitely on a higher level um trevor definitely he could be i think for social studies and science i See, definitely think he has that brain for it um he does not have that brain for math he knows it i mean heck the kid comes home and shows his homework sometimes and i'm just like maybe aubrey can figure this out because i can't um and then Casey, he's on that line. But I think a lot of Casey's issues are himself. I think he gets a little bit like stressed and, and worried and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, things are going pretty well. I can't complain. So that's my thoughts on advance. If you have anything to ask me or even Aubrey, you can ask. And if you have, leave it for Aubrey, just put Aubrey and she leave the comment on the video and I'll see it and I'll tell her to go check it and she'll respond to you from her account. Um, but you know, it was her choice, but it wasn't, you know, she fought me a little bit on it and didn't want to do all the advanced placement classes. But now that she's in them, I think, and you know, honestly, I think for the next three years, she's going to have the same group of friends because it's based, she says it's basically the same few kids in her, you know, classes just kind of mixed around. Um, so, you know, they do get like a closer bond and stuff like that. And then also, you know, I think it's her eighth grade year. She could be invited into the, Na I think it's the National Honor Society. Um, it's not ROTC. Account services was just calling. And then I, I know. Hung I hung up. Oh. It's not ROTC. It's something else. I, I know. It's the the National Honor Society and one other thing. But basically, you know, they're clubs for kids that do well, that go to school, that have a good attendance record, that want to be there, that work hard, that are respectful. Um, so I think in the long run, It'll be a really good thing. So if you have any questions, like I said, ask us below. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.